Hello, uh, in this video we're gonna check, we're gonna review limits. Again, you should know how to do your limits. You should review if you don't remember how to do limits from your previous course. But uh, here I'm gonna give you a little twist on how to take limits using Taylor expansions. In particular, it's in McLaurin series, Taylor expansions around zero. Now, uh, usually you don't, you remember your Taylor expansions, you take your Taylor series from, <coughs> sorry, from your previous course. But usually you don't like them <laughs> for some reason. So every time that you can actually use L'Hopital, you try to use L'Hopital, fine by me if you use L'Hopital. I just want to teach you this because this is the real powerful thing that uh, when you outgrow L'Hopital is what you do. And this is what physicists and mathematicians do all the time. Engineers tend to prefer L'Hopital. Why? Because it's very computer-like, it's less intuitive. And uh, every time that you can do it, you tend to do it. It's fine with me, you can do L'Hopital. Just remember that the name L'Hopital is not the name of the person that actually uh, came up with the rule, proved the rule. It's the name of the person who paid the person who came up uh, with the rule. Uh, I invite you to check Wikipedia on the history of the L'Hopital rule. It's actually what I explain. All right, so let's uh, review a little bit Taylor series. I mean, I have here the Taylor expansions of uh, some basic functions. We're not going to see anything more fancy than this. Uh, this is the exponential. Right, one plus x plus x squared divided by two, etc., etc. The sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Now, uh, if x is much smaller than one, it is enough to just get one term or two of the Taylor expansion. In particular, if x is much smaller than one, the exponential is one plus x plus things that are much smaller than x, x squared. Uh, the sine is x plus things that go with x cubed. So, in my, if x is uh, much smaller than one, uh, then um, x cubed is going to be much smaller even, right? And the cosine is 1 minus x squared divided by 2 plus things that go with x to the 4. This O with something inside means terms that are proportional to x squared or higher powers than x squared. Okay? So uh, this, this little thing here, this little table, is mainly what we're going to use to compute limits. Okay. Let's do some examples. Let's go from something simple to something a little bit more complicated. Uh, in which actually using Taylor expansions is more powerful. All right, so to begin with, something very simple. Let's do the limit when x goes to zero of uh, sine squared sine of x divided by x. What is the value of that? Well, when x goes to zero, by inspection you see that you get an indetermination, zero over zero, right? Well, let's find out what you would do usually. You would do L'Hopital and you say, right, the derivative of this guy is a cosine, then a zero is one, and the derivative of this one is one, so the limit has to be one. That's L'Hopital. With Taylor expansion, it's much easier, in my opinion. This is the limit when x goes to zero of, and then because x is very small, it's actually going to zero, I write the sign is just x, right, that goes like x, plus things that go with order if you want x squared. But I neglect this thing because we're going to x being zero divided by x. So this thing is x over x. So it's the limit when x goes to zero of x over x cancels and one, which is the same that you get with your logical rule by taking Taylor expansions. All right. Uh, let's do another. So let's do the limit when x goes to zero of sine squared of x divided by x. All right, so again, we can do Taylor expansions. So we get the limit when x goes to zero of the sign is an x in that limit, goes like s, x squared divided by x, the square cancels with the x, so this is the limit x going to zero of x, and this is zero. So far so good, both of them are super simple, Taylor expansions or L'Hopital, either way. All right, let's do some more. I'm gonna erase these ones. Let's do the limit of, uh, let's see, one minus e to the x divided by x. How about that one? So if you do inspection, you see that this is again another in determination is one minus e to the zero, which is one, one minus one zero divided by zero. Let me do, you can do L'Hopital for sure. Here is super simple to do Taylor expansion. If I do Taylor expansion, 
look what the exponential is going to be, it's 1 plus x. So if I do the Taylor expansion, this is the limit of 1 minus 1 plus x, it's things that are higher order, but I don't care, divided by x, because there's 0, when x goes to 0. So the 1 cancels with the 1, so what I'm left with is the limit of x going to 0 of minus x divided by x, which is equal to uh, the limit when x goes to 0, I'm just writing all the steps, of minus 1, which is just minus 1. There you go, the limit is minus 1. You could have done this uh, using logital for sure, uh, but Taylor expansion is one step. Once you're used to it, it's oh, e to the x, 0, oh, that's x, that's 1 minus x. The 1 cancels the 1 and I'm left with the x. Alright, let's do one more difficult limit that is more difficult to do with L'Hopital just to show off the power of um, using Taylor series for this. Now, before watching this, you should have watched the introduction to basic complex manipulations because this is going to use uh, complex, it's a limit that includes complex numbers. So, let's see it. Okay, we're going to do this limit. This is the the most difficult limit that you're going to face in this course. We don't need more than this now. Okay. So this one, if you try to substitute directly, you get that when it equals 1, this is e to the i pi. This is e to the minus i pi. But hold on. Remember the representation. I mean, I remind you, if you haven't watched it, watch the video on basic complex manipulations where we, where we go over there. Remember that e to the i pi, it's equal to e to the minus i pi, equals minus 1, right? You rotate pi, and then you go to minus 1, this point is minus 1. Or you rotate minus pi in the other direction, then you get to minus 1, it's the same number. So this thing is minus 1, minus minus 1, 0. And then minus 1 squared is 1, minus 1, 0. 0 over 0 in the termination. So this limit is difficult. And in fact, it's not easy to do using Taylor, but it's impossible to do using L'Hopital. Well, it's not impossible, but technically, with the way you learn L'Hopital, you will have a hard time applying L'Hopital. Let's solve it by Taylor expansion. This is a real limit. We will face a limit like that in the course. Okay? So pay attention. The first thing that we do is we transform it, uh, because we want to apply Taylor expansions, we want to transform it uh, to a limit in which things go to zero. To neglect higher powers, right? To say that the x squared is negligible with respect to x and x is negligible with respect to 1, x needs to go to zero. So let me do a change of variables and define a new variable, epsilon, so that n is equal to 1 plus epsilon. So that means that when n goes to, to 1, then that means that epsilon goes to 0. All right? So uh, I write this, change of variables. This is now the limit when epsilon goes to 0. And then this is e to the i pi 1 plus epsilon minus e to the i pi 1 uh, yeah uh, my, minus e to the i pi 1 plus epsilon divided by 1 plus epsilon squared minus 1 alright ok so the first thing that we can do is uh, maybe we must take a common factor e to the i pi. If we take a common factor e to the i pi, right, this thing, let's write it like this, let's do all the steps. Limit epsilon going to zero of, and then I'm going to erase this little plot so it's not in the way. This is e to the i pi. Uh, multiplying e to the i uh, epsilon pi, right, the two factors in this, minus e to the minus i pi, e to the minus i epsilon pi, divided by 1 plus epsilon square minus 1. Now, this number is minus 1, this number is also minus 1, we can take that minus 1 common factor and put it outside. So, we get that this thing is the limit when epsilon goes to 0 of the minus 1 I take out minus 
the limit of epsilon going to zero, of e to the i epsilon pi minus e to the minus i epsilon pi. 1 plus epsilon squared minus 1. Now, you remember your complex manipulation video? You could actually write this in terms of a sine function. Remember, the sine is the difference between two imaginary exponentials. We're not going to do it like that. We're going to do it directly taking Taylor here, but you could transform into a sine and then do your, your L'Hopital if you want. You could even do L'Hopital here if you wanted. But let's not. Let's do Taylor expansion now that we have it like that. So, if we get Taylor expansions and we get the dominant term, the, the lowest power term, right? Then we get minus limit epsilon going to zero of, and I get this thing is one plus i epsilon pi plus higher powers that I don't care, minus one minus i epsilon pi plus higher powers that I don't care because they're negligible as compared to. Actually, if the ones you see the ones are gonna cancel, if the ones didn't cancel, I don't even I wouldn't even care about the epsilons because the one dominates. But because the ones cancel, I need to write the next term, is the epsilons. In the denominator, I expand the power, and I get 1 plus 2 epsilon uh, plus uh, epsilon squared minus 1. Now, the epsilon squared, again, I don't care. It's higher power. In fact, I wouldn't even care about the epsilon if the ones then cancel, but the ones cancel. So the epsilon squared will be declared because the epsilon dominates when epsilon goes to 0. The ones cancel here. The ones cancel here, and what I'm left with is minus the limit of epsilon going to zero of, and let's write the thing, this is twice i epsilon pi divided by 2 epsilon. Nice, the epsilons cancel, the 2 cancel, and what I'm left with is minus limit epsilon going to zero of 2i pi, sorry, of i pi, which is just i pi, and that's it. That's the value of the limit. And we've done. Again, this is the most difficult limit that you're going to face in the course, I think, at least in my opinion. So get familiar with it. And as usual, you are not expected to get all of you get it right away. Please do ask questions. Come with the questions for when we meet. All right. Okay. Thank you for this.